Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go through and talk about joint placement uh, fundamentals. Your joints are the foundation of everything going forward. Um, and so it's good to understand how best to place and orient joints. A lot of people, when they are placing joints, they might go into an orthographic view and just do something like click, click, click. And that's fine, but personally, I feel like I'd have to do a lot more editing in this particular type of um, way of doing it. And I feel like it's a little bit more error prone in introducing issues into my placement. So instead, I like to do a very like individual joint placement, meaning that I would do something like this, where I would just click in the world and get myself a joint, and then I would position that joint. So in this video, I'm not going to go through placing every single joint on this mesh, uh, but I am going to go over some just common things to keep in mind and look out for when you are placing joints. So the first thing, let's say I'm doing this upper arm here, I'll uh, kind of position it and then I'll look around in perspective view to make sure that it's kind of right in the center of that mass. Normally you want your joints facing down the x-axis and the reason for that is your x-axis is most commonly your twist axis and the reason it's your twist axis has to do with rotate order. So XYZ is the default rotate order. Most game engines that I've used tend to only support XYZ. So knowing how rotate order works can affect how you want to orient your joints. So let's go over rotate order real quick. So let's go to gimbal mode. And if you have an XYZ rotate order, you want to think of it almost backwards, ZYX, meaning that with a XYZ rotate order, Z will take Y and X with it. Y takes X with it. So Y is your kind of your problem axis because with Z, you're not going to get in a gimbal lock anywhere. But with Y, you can see that I can get into a situation where two axes overlap and that's going to get me a gimbal lock. And then lastly, X goes by itself, which is why it's a good twist axis, because twisting tends to have the most motion. So if we want X going down, then I will rotate this. Let's go back to uh, object mode. I will rotate this going down like so. And then the next thing to think about is which axis should be your Y axis. Because as we saw, Y is going to be the axis that kind of gets us into trouble with gimbal lock, so we want to put it on the axis that has the most uh, or the least amount of range, essentially. Now the arms are actually pretty, um, you know, mobile, they can they can move a lot, and so it's whether or not we want it to be this bend axis or this swing axis. And most likely we want it to be the swing axis, so we probably want to do something like this. Let's set that to negative 90 because our elbow is going to be a bend axis, it doesn't swing, so having it go the full, uh, you know, being able to go beyond 90 degrees on the elbow is important. Um, and with the uh, Y axis, the swing axis here, you know, normally if you get to this point, your clavicle is going to start kicking in once you go beyond, and that's going to help a lot, uh, keep us out of gimbal lock, because the clavicle is going to give us a lot of motion there. So, let's tweak that a little bit so it goes down the arm a little bit better. All right. And then I will duplicate this joint and immediately parent it underneath. So that's Control D to duplicate, and then I can just select the duplicated joint, the original joint, and hit P to parent. And the reason I'm doing this is so that Translate X will be my bone length so I only want, on any child joints, I only want X to really have any translations. So I will rough this in. Again, let's take a look and see where the elbow ought to be. I feel like that's pretty close in terms of uh, the length aspect. But now, and this is why I don't like doing that click, click, click method because it gets really hard uh, in that method to start doing things. You have to constantly reorient your joints. Whereas here, I know that my elbow, I want it a little bit further back, right? So I will kind of do this. 
to rotate the parent joint. Also, I can kind of look at it through this angle and see that it's not quite centered anymore. So let's do that. And maybe I want it a little bit longer. Okay. And then lastly, we will duplicate that again, parent it to joint two, and do the same thing. So translate X, we'll go down to about here, and then here we just need to rotate this back in. Now here you can see like you might want to think you would do this, but that would be bad because now we are introducing a non-planar uh, rotation into our joint chain. And for IK, it's really nice to have a planar uh, rotate plane. So what we're going to do instead is you'll go up to the top joint and adjust there. So something like that. And then lengthwise, this needs to get a little bit longer. Somewhere around there. Then we'll go up to the top joint again and freeze rotations. So what we should see on the lower arm and hand joint is only translate X. And if we go to the joint orients, we should only see rotate Z's happening there. On the top joint, it's okay to have more than one translate and more than one rotate on your joint orient because it is the top of the chain. But your child joints, you really want clean translation X, just, just translation X for your bone length, and then only one of these should have uh, a rotate axis uh, on it. Now there is a little bit of an exception here, and that's going to be on the hand. And the reason is, goes back to rotate order. Now if we think about the range of motion on the hand, uh, Y currently actually gets a lot of range of motion on the hand. You can plant your hand fully back, you can bend it quite a bit forward, but Z doesn't really get that much motion. So it's kind of, uh, what I like to do for, for game rigs here is actually swap this. So let me go back to object mode and set this negative 90. So Z is my up and down and Y is my side to side because that axis doesn't actually have a whole lot of range. This will again protect me from getting into situations where I might get into gimbal lock. So if you freeze uh, transformations on that, we'll now see that we have this and that's okay. Again, it's uh, we're still having very clean joint orients and joint placement here. So going uh, through the rest of this, um, obviously you'd want to name your joints. Uh, you know, there's lots of opinions on this. The main thing for me is just consistency, right? So um, throughout your your hierarchy, as long as things aren't consistently named, I think that's the most important thing. So I usually, my, my kind of default would be something like this, upper arm L, lower arm L, and hand L. Um, Let's talk about fingers, because fingers can be a little bit tricky. And what I'll do here is wireframe on shaded so we can do that, and then also use default material so it'll be a little bit easier to see. So on a hand like this, this doesn't have a whole lot of topology to work with. So on metacarpals, I probably would only do uh, the thumb. Uh, I'd always do the thumb metacarpal, um, always do that one. And then on the hand, I might just do one on the pinky so that we can kind of cup the hand, but we don't have to do a metacarpal on each one of these because, like I said, there's not really a lot of geometry here to work with. Uh, let me pull up something real quick. So I can draw on the screen a little bit easier. Okay, so let's do this. When I think about finger joist, joint placement, um, it's good to kind of think about how this thing rotates, right? So thumb kind of looks like that. That's your thumb pad. So my metacarpal here is probably going to be somewhere uh, around this point. And then my first joint, you usually want to look out for, you'll see like three lines like this. Um, that is a pretty good indicator that that middle line is intended to be the knuckle. 
For finger joints, I do like to ride close to the top because that gets me a nice sharp uh, bend, whereas closer to the middle gets me a little bit more of a softer bend, which for knuckles, I think it's nice to have that hard bend. So again, here's our three, our three lines here. So joints, that's too high to the top. Oops. So we don't want to go that high, but we do want to go probably about here. So that would be my thumb. For the fingers, you'll notice that the topology is a little bit different. So if you look at the top, we can kind of see that there's a knuckle shape here and that there's a knuckle shape here. Um, that is correct. You'll see that we don't have like the three loops, but we kind of do. So what it happens is it kind of does this. It terminates like that on both of these. And uh, that gets us, uh, what that allows this area to do is compress. So um, you'll often see on kind of lower poly models, this kind of setup. I actually really like this setup. Um, so again, your joints are gonna go here and here. And then up here, they have the three loops here. Uh, you can also see another loop here though. Um, let's scooch around to the top view. I would probably put the knuckle joint here instead of here. Um, I like to put it a little bit higher up because um, I just think it gives you a more anatomical uh, deformation than, than putting it a little bit lower. So I would probably put it right up in here um, instead of here. It might be when you're just looking at loops, it's really easy to just go like, oh, I see three loops. I'm just going to put the, the joint on the, the middle one. But uh, you also kind of want to look at just kind of where the peaks are and and also just anatomically, yeah, your joints are going to be back up on this one here. Um, so what I'll probably do now is go through and place uh, the joints myself uh, because it is going to take some time and I don't want to bore anybody. Um, and then once I'm done placing them, I will go through uh, my final results and just kind of talk about the, uh, the, the edits I made and, and the choices I made and, um, and why.